that time, once again, Friday evening, April 26, 2019, this is The Freaker's Ball, right here live on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz and many other places. The audio stream goes out everywhere, but uh, let's just talk about RLM Radio XYZ for that. But uh, welcome to all the folks listening in from reallibertyorg or freedomsnetwork.com if you found us on minds.com yeah we're there too welcome to y'all the the twitter people welcome to all the twitter people over there it's always good to have you here with us and uh wherever else you may be tuned in from i don't know but uh this is the last freaker's ball of april 2019 <laughs> i had to do a little dramatic pause there uh, the last freaker's ball oh no no of April. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're all doing all right out there and uh, wherever you are on this Friday night, getting ready for the good weekend. Hopefully you got a good weekend coming up for you. Uh, the weather here has been really nice over these last week or two. I don't know how long, but it's it's spring. Uh, yeah, spring. <laughs> almost. No, it's not quite fall yet. No, almost. Oh, it's spring. So uh, this is actually one of the better times of year. Spring and fall are my two favorite up here. Um I, I'm not real fond of the summer, but the winter I do like. Oh, there's some moose. And she's telling us to chillax. Anyway, let me say howdy to all the folks over here in the Real Liberty Media chat room on irc.freenode.net, which you can access via the the uh, reallibertymedia.com uh, website there. Uh, there's a little button on the side there that says pop-up chat, so you can yeah, check that out should you so desire. Uh, anyway, so any hi and howdy to all the folks that are here tonight. Uh, we got the barman and the beetle, Mr. Cowboy Tech, and myself and the Mighty Moose Girl, uh, myself Grimner, yeah, and the Mighty Moose Girl who will be on with us shortly. Uh, we got Miss Kate in DC and Asmodeus. We got Charles Sedoni and Graham Z. Great show earlier, talking all about some very interesting stuff that you may want to. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Sock. <laughs> that you may want to check out on her blog over there at RealLibertyMedia.com. Yeah, she's got a bunch of fine blogs over there. Well, we got Java Doctor and Rain and Mr. Robo Works and his Bubla, the Mighty Bubla. We got Mr. Rome's and the Bots, Vanna and Weatherdork. Yeah, we got Z Bev Z and Phantom and uh, and well then Colfax in the Cyborg, Cyborgian Noodle, half half human, half bot. We got Goober uh, and Gromit and JJ's and uh, Mr. Kozu, uh, Carl Marx. I uh, still haven't figured out whether I like that guy or not. Uh, we got Ponder Gander and Pone Sauce and uh, Mr. Sock Puppet, Miss uh, Vanamita, uh, Van, Van, this fake bot, Van Van E White, Vinnie White. <laughs> Along with Vinny himself and uh, Anti, or uh, also known as W4 DKV. So we got we got a good crowd here tonight. Also, we have people in other chat rooms that I'm aware of, uh, Miss Chloe, uh, and others that are out there and such things. There's Vanna. Vanna spitting out the spitting out the ducks. Kate and Sock Puppet shooting at them. All right. So uh, I, I assume. Moose Girl will call in momentarily. She said she's here in the chat, so uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and believe that because I don't think she's got any scripts that just type I'm here. <laughs> Although it would be very easy to do. <laughs> yeah, you especially time it for right at the beginning at beginning of Freaker's Ball. She could just uh, set it for uh, Fridays at uh, 10 p.m. her time. Say I'm here. <laughs> Oh, man. So, uh, anyway, how the hell y'all doing? Um, let me see if I got any good updates for you. Yeah, I'm still working on that freaking garden, but so far I got nothing. I've been digging and plowing and putting in fresh dirt, and, uh, and nothing's growing for me. I, I don't, I'm not sure yet, but I assume I'll get some, and I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying uh, to, to uh, get, get some kind of... <laughs> oh, Carl, 
Uh, still, man, I, 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 I just don't know what to tell you. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> hey, there's Benoit joining us. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep trying and add Pete Moss, says Beetle. Uh, yep, that's something to try. And if, if nothing grows this year, that's fine. <laughs> it's a lot of work for nothing, but if nothing grows this year, that's fine. I'll work on it next, and, and get it, make sure it works next year. Um, and, uh, yeah, people give me ideas and suggestions now, but uh, yeah, I, I, I've already wasted, I, I'm, I guess I'm going to say wasted, a lot of seeds because I've planted a bunch of seeds in, in some indoor containers and none of them, not, not a single one. Very, a variety of different types of seeds, and, and not a single one of them grew. Um, so I've got some stuff started outside now. Where, where, where's, where's, where, where's that digger? There it is. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Um, I'll get something going. I'm pretty sure I'll get something going. I just I wish more of it would just grow, and that would make things better. Um, are you here, Moose? Hello, hello. I see it says one on call. Oh, there Can you, you hear me? There you are. There you are. Okay. Great. Cool. The light from my headset went out, so I don't know. Hello? Yeah, no, I, I was I was confused, uh, uh, distracted, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm here. Yeah, good, good, good. How you doing? I'm uh, fine now. Yeah? Yeah? Now? As opposed to when? Hello? Did you did you mute up again? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. There you are. <laughs> you went away there for a minute. I don't know what's going on. Fucking mute button. Ah. Anyway, I had an allergy attack. Now I'm good. I think. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, it is, that, it is that season. It is, and it sucks. Yeah, yeah. I don't really have allergies like that. I, uh, I mean, as far as like hay fever, that kind of stuff. Oh, but, yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't know what to tell you on that. I, I, there, it's there's just probably, a fact of fucking life. There's probably some kind of good herb or something that you can use to oh, yeah. battle I take allergies. It, I take allergy medication every day. Yeah, what, what do you take? Oh, a generic fucking, uh, what's it called? Generic something. Generic it's the something. same as fucking, uh, All right. the purple shit. I don't know. I don't Allegra. Know. Same as Allegra, but it's generic. All right. I, I imagine there's some, some, uh, natural allergy inhibitors. There hate. is, but you have to... One of them is, um, no, Benadryl sucks because Benadryl makes you totally fucking tired. I hate fucking Benadryl. I fucking hate it. Benadryl makes you tired. There's a, Kate's got a good idea. Some weed and a beer. <laughs> right, there you go. That's what I usually do. I mean, come on. But they say you're supposed to get local uh, honey. You're supposed to what now? Get local honey. Oh, yeah, get a local honey. Local, where you... No, honey from fucking bees. Yeah, no, get, 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 <laughs> get yourself a local honey. You may still have allergies, but at least you'll be getting no, some. No, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. no I, I know. I have no <laughs> luck in that area, so I'm, ta I'm actually talking about actual fucking honey from bees. Yeah, yeah. I I know. And so, it's thanks, it's thanks, though. I mean, you know... I've pretty much given up on that shit. I'm done. I'm done when it comes to fucking hey, you know, well, one relationships. Of, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll pop in and out and around. You'll, you'll have Fuck some. that. No, no, I'm fucking done. All right. Never mind. Then. I'm done. <laughs> see, see, the moose is going to become I'm a done. nun. I am done. It's not fucking worth it. Yep. Yep. Sister, That's sister, what I'm saying. sister moose. <laughs> yes. The new, newly converted Catholic nun. Oh yeah, right. no, I'm not going that far. <laughs> but uh, speaking of, hey, Catholic that could be a, that could nuns, be a, that, that could be a hot outfit. You never know. Yeah, speaking of Catholic <laughs> nuns, we were having a conversation in the chat last night about our upbringings uh -huh. and about how times have changed 
from then till now, because back in the day, and we're not talking too long ago here, I grew up in the 70s, all right? Right. Uh, it used to be okay to wh whoop your fucking kids. It used to be okay right. to beat no, your kids. Right, no, it was not just okay, it was something that you had to do. Right, it was acceptable. Even the non uh, Catholic uh, schools beat the kids. Oh, yeah, with a rule. Okay. So, what I'm saying is, all this, I mean, okay, granted, I'm not a, for abuse and neglect, okay? Let's just put that out there. I'm not an advocate of child abuse or neglect right. in any way, shape, or form. But what I am saying is that, God damn it, I got my fucking ass whooped. <laughs> you know? And some of the ways that I got my ass whooped, today, and today by today's standards, would be considered child abuse. Oh, yeah, that, that would be a jailable you know, offense right there. My parents never got arrested. The, no, no one ever called not. the cops on my parents for whooping my ass or giving me a backhand or whipping my ass with a wooden spoon or a fucking belt. No one ever called the cops. The neighbors could hear it. No one called the cops. Because back in the day, that Everybody. was acceptable. Yeah, it was every, you know everybody, what? Everybody I don't think we had such a bad problem with uh, felons. You know? Right. Yeah, sure, there's occasional felons and everything. But you know what? Raising a kid with a, like that, I have never been to prison. Okay? Yeah. I've never tried to rob a bank. <laughs> I've never tried to fucking, well, tell, 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 you know, steal a car. Tell, tell me this. Tell me this. Did you, did you, did you spank your boys? I whooped them a couple of times. Not bad, you know. Yeah. Give them a little swat on the ass. Sure. Right, right. And they, and they you turned know. out, they turned out great. Right. I put the fear of fucking God to them a few times. Well, the fear of moose, anyway. The fear of moose. You got that straight. <laughs> you know, I was, I had to be mom and dad. I was a single mom for the majority of it, raising them kids. Yeah. Oh yeah. I had to be mom and dad, so I had to be a fucking badass, dude. I had to be fucking harsh. Absolutely. I did. I had to be a fucking badass, which hey, is, you know, I'm not I, proud I, of it. You know, I wish it, you know, whatever, you know, well, but. Well, well, when, we, when we first met, those boys were like eight, seven, eight years old. Yep. And and I was a little concerned about them because, you know, you were, you were trying to work and looking for places and. And the right. kids, I, I could hear them kids rap running around and yelling and screaming all the time. And I was like, holy hell, that, that that's got to be torture to to yeah. live with those little brats. <laughs> right, but I kept them busy. You know, that was the main thing. That was one of my goal, one of my tricks, I guess. And it's not really a trick; it's just common sense. Yeah. I kept them fucking busy. Oh boy, I, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of of young children screaming and hollering no, and no. running oh, around, I mean, and uh, they're so, they're so yeah. amped out on nothing, you know. And it, <laughs> <laughs> like you gotta down. keep them occupied. You gotta keep them involved in something. Always yeah. something. Yeah. But uh, I mean, my point is, is some of this child abuse has gone too fucking far. Now we got a fucking. It's okay, people, kids. Parents raise their kids and tell them it's okay to do whatever the fuck they want to do. Guess what? It's not okay to do whatever the fuck you want to do. Because right. your little fucking shit brat is going to end up being a fucking asshole and a bully. Absolutely. Okay? If you let your kid just think he's the fucking bee's knees and he's the end-all, be-all, and blah, blah, blah. And, well, if, oh, if, yeah, we got money, so I'm going to get my kids the best sports equipment. I'm going to give them the best designer clothes, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to be okay with them if they're assholes. Right. It's like, really? You want your kid to be a fucking asshole? <laughs> I don't think so. Because yeah. my kid was on that other end of that kid's bullying. And believe me, it was no fucking fun. Right. It was no fucking fun at all. Yeah. And no, so, I come to no, find no. out, the kids that are the biggest bullies in school these days are yeah. the ones that have every fucking thing. Sure. The rich kids. Yeah, they're the spoiled. The ones who and... let them get away with everything because they're special because we have money. Right. You know and, what? And, and also... Up. If you're yeah. teaching your kid that's okay to be a dick or an asshole... You're a fucked up parent. Sorry. I remember one time Zach told me that Matt made fun of some disabled kid at school. I fucking read him the riot fucking act. Yep. I said, you fucking make fun of some fucking disabled kid, Matt? 
I'm going to disable you. I'm like, that's bullshit. Right. I, I didn't mince words at all as a parent. I really didn't. I'm sure you didn't. I fucking you're, you're told not... like it is. This is how it is, and this is how it is. You know, <laughs> it's like this is it, dude. Uh, I I can't imagine you ever uh, throttling back your words. No. No. And so, I was like back in the day, the bullies were like the kids from the the other side of the tracks, what we call them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The kids didn't have a lot of money. They were trouble troubled households or whatever. Those are the bullies, but now it's totally flipped. The bullies are the ones whose the parents have money and they have the designer clothes, so they think that it's okay to make fun of kids that have thrift store clothes. Yeah. You know? Oh, I'm it's sure like, there's still plenty of know, poor kids that are bullies too, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. But anyway, uh, the, okay, so back going back to this time, there were still bullies, right? Yeah. And back in the 70s. Sure, so yeah. I was talking to this lady at the bar I go to. She works there, and she was telling me a story about Eau Claire, about when her brother, her youngest brother, was 10 years old, and they were walking home from Longfellow School, and they came upon some bullies. They saw some bullies were, like, in their way. Right. They want to throw snowballs at them and give them shit and do whatever, you know, typical bully stuff. Yeah. So the, the kids decide... Him and a friend decided to go across Dell's Pond. Not across the whole thing, but go on to Dell's Pond to take, like, a shortcut to get home, right? Yeah. Well, it was in November. Okay. And the, I, it, Dell's Pond is part of the river. So the one kid fell in, this lady's brother, 10 years old, fell right. in. Right, right. Didn't get out. Died. Drowned. So the other kid that was with them, never got over that. Uh, that's a tough thing to get over. Yeah, and so it's really sad, but that river, is it takes lives. It just took a kid's life the other day. 17. Well, it, 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 ain't, you, what? It, it ain't the river that's taking lives, it's stupidity. It, it was a stupid decision, right. Yeah. True. And, it you know, it's just, it's so unfortunate, and I feel so bad, but those boys had no reason jumping in the river right now. It's It's above flood stage right now. Right. I mean, it's raging river. I mean, so they jumped off because everyone else jumps off there. My kid has even jumped off there. <laughs> and even the lady I was talking to, his brother drowned. She's, when she grew up, she grew up in that neighborhood. Yeah. She jumped off there. But you only do it when the river is not raging like it is right now and not super high like it is right now. Right. I mean, I just I just feel sick to my stomach. It's just, it's ridiculous. But anyway, all right, it's about a stupid decision. Yeah. And there was four boys that did it. Well, three got out, and one didn't. Hey, well, it's not a bad ratio, you know. <laughs> no, I guess not. But three, uh, three, three out of four. Oh, was that Meatloaf song? Oh, two out of three. Two out of three, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <coughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess my point was is the parenting. I mean, I was raised, I mean, like I said, I got backhanded. I got fucking swatted with a fucking wooden spoon and a goddamn belt. Ah, well, you were a bad you kid. To, you do, no, I was not. You were a, you you were a rotten... This kid, you do this stuff to your kids now, you're going to fucking jail. Oh, absolutely. It's like, come on, people. You know, and we wonder why the education system's crap, fucking all this shit. You know? It, it, and then, like, people are like, oh, well, the city, the state. You know, no, 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 no. When yeah. it comes to parenting, it's up to the fucking parent. Sure. Okay, don't be blaming the city. Well, this they got to do this, or they got to do that. The city's got to stop these kids from jumping mm. off that cliff. No. Parents need to tell their kids not to jump off the cliff when the river's like this. Government's got to run my life for me. Yeah, You know what? <laughs> if you need someone to tell you what to fucking do, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Do you have a fucking brain? Or not? <laughs> well... You know, you want the fucking city to protect your child from jumping off that cliff? No, that's your job as a parent. Right. Yeah, I have no well, doubt about this, it. This is, this is where we be, we've come. It used to be back in the 70s when they let parents raise their kids however they wanted to. And now the state's got to step in or the government, oh, well, you swatted your kid on the ass. You're a child abuser. 
No, I'm not. If I swap my kid in my fucking in his fucking ass, I'm not a child abuser. No. Okay? I'm raising my kid. I'm not letting him make the decisions because I am the fucking parent, not the kid. And my job is to not be friends with my fucking kid either. No, it's it's the I told myself about... that a long time. We can be friends when they're thirty. Okay? Right now I'm their parent and I am not their fucking friend. I am their fucking parent. And I'm responsible for these two people until they raise the age of 18. Not that, that and the, my, my responsibility doesn't end there, but according to the state, it does. Right. right. Yeah, that's the, the magic number when suddenly right. you're... <laughs> that's why I had to give Matt 20 bucks so he could get up to his dad's this weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they're 18 now. Right. Like, so they're, they're... Oh, I can say fuck. I'm going to say fucking fuck because that's what I do. Because I like fuck. I like it. I like the word. I like the word. I like the I action. Do. I like the yeah. word fuck, and it works for me. <laughs> and, you know, I was supposedly brought up Christian. At one point, I was supposedly brought up Christian. Yeah. Which I've abandoned that a long time ago. But to me, a swear word was taking the Lord's name in vain. Yeah, fuck well, is not a swear word as far as I'm fucking concerned. <laughs> well, obviously. No, but... God damn it, is it more of a swear word than... Fuck. Well, you see, now to me, and I, because I, I never agreed with this cussing as taking the the Lord's name in vain. Right. What would be taking the Lord's name in vain would be to say, "I am God." Then you're right. taking yeah. his, his name in vain. Uh, but just saying, "God damn it," that doesn't mean to me that. I mean, you're not. Where? Where? How are you taking right. his name in vain? You're asking. You're asking him to damn something. You're. That's like a right. prayer. Basically, I remember, yeah, I remember when I was growing up, and there was one some people, one kid in, that I knew, one it was a girl I think, and her parents were so like tight, like so like fucking strict, like just so uptight. Yeah. And you couldn't even say goddamn or damn. Right. Any of that. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Come on. Come on, people. Yeah. Come on. And, well, the thing about fucking is so easy to say. All right. It's, it's, it's a, as, as we've heard, such a versatile word. <laughs> it is. It's a very versatile word. It can be used for many things. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, so many, so many meanings. There's huh? many meanings for that word. Right. So I'm and, saying. And it's just a good, it's just, it's just kind of stress relief right there, saying that word. Yep, it is. It's instant stress relief. So, <laughs> you know what? Criticize me all you want, motherfuckers. About me saying the word fuck so much, but try it sometime. You might like it. It's stress relief, dude. Yeah. Total release. Like, you say fuck, and it's like, okay. Ah, yeah, better. All right. It's a little bit better now. I can deal with it. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's, let's go to some music here. Let's okay. Get this thing kicked off directly how we're supposed to. And the other thing is, I don't give a fucking shit if people agree with me or not. And then there's oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> So, whatever. All right. Well, enjoy, folks. We'll be back in a few minutes. Carry on, motherfuckers. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> I forgot, forgot why I was there for a moment. Um, <laughs> all right. That was uh, John 5 uh, with Corey Taylor there on bass, Michael Anthony on vocals, Fred Corey on drums, at the Whiskey A Go Go out there in L.A., from April 6th, that was this month, just a few weeks ago. Yeah, good stuff there, doing the old uh, uh, Van Halen dude and take your whiskey home. Uh, before that, a moose girl request, the Eagles, uh, Joe Walsh, uh, doing Rocky Mountain High back in 1977. Uh, and we kicked it off with uh, the music of the Doors, the Roadhouse Blues, to the scenes from the movie Vanishing Point. Yep, good stuff. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yeah, it was good, good jam, man. Whiskey and Go-Go is a hot place anyway. Uh, but oh, yeah. uh, those, those guys, you know, put, put, uh, I think those guys just wandered in and started got up there on stage with John 5 and started playing. <laughs> I don't know. Sweet. I don't, I don't really know the whole story, but there are, there are other videos from that show uh, up there uh, on the YouTube, should anybody care to look it up. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Let's see what I got bookmarked here. Okay, so it was Earth Day recently. Yesterday. 
Yep. And uh, speaking of Earth Day, and speaking of the polluting, you know, so it's it, it's supposedly the the blame of pollution is put on the consumer or the people, right? Right. Never the corporation, never the oil companies that do the oil spills, you know, oh, yeah, they get fined or whatever. Yeah. But they don't really know the long-lasting effects of all this shit, right? And we're we're experiencing the long-lasting effects right now. Okay. From the previous testing and the previous pollutant things that have happened, you know. Uh-huh. So, anyway, um, one of the biggest pollutants in this world, polluters in this world... Is the United States military, but this doesn't get talked about ever. Right. You know, they just go in there, they put, they they drop their shit and they fucking leave. You know, um, my uncle was stationed in McMurdo Station in Antarctica for six months when he was in the Navy. Right. And and I've seen other documentaries on this. Uh, subject, but or other you know stories or whatever. But um, what the U.S. military would do down there is they just dump the shit right in the ocean, dude. Oh sure. They're garbage. They put garbage in like barrels and they just dump it in the ocean. Yeah. Because their thinking is, oh, it's frozen. It's not going to hurt anything. Right, yeah. You know, and it's just disgusting. If you guys really knew the amount of waste the U.S. military has left across this fucking planet, if we really knew the truth, we would be stunned, all right? But, yeah, we, get, the consumer, the people, get blamed for being the biggest polluters on the planet, on the world, right? Sure, yeah. But, you know what? These motherfuckers are leaving uranium canisters... Laying in fucking Iraq or Iran or wherever, Yemen. You know, kids walk up, pick it up, fucking blow up. There's landmines and shit. Right. I mean, it's crazy. And But no one talks about this. The blame just gets put on, you know, you know the military is so great. You know, it's just like the thing with the cops. It's the same thing. Oh, a cop kills, shoots and kills an unarmed person. All they got to say is they were in fear for their life or their partner's life, oh, and they'll get off. Yeah. I mean, very rarely does a cop get convicted of killing an unarmed person. And there's a, there's a story playing out in Minneapolis right now. I'm sure you guys remember this one. Uh, it was from about a year ago. This woman called the cops because she was uh, she thought she heard a rape going on. And so she called the cops because, you know, she she lived in Minneapolis and, you know, she lives in the city in South Minneapolis there and, you know, close to an alley. And she thought she heard what sounded like a rape of, of occurring. Right. Okay. Right. She wasn't sure exactly what was happening. Not sure if, the first, if there was just two people having sex or if it was really a sexual assault. Anyway, okay. um, she calls the cops. She calls them. 15 minutes later, 20 minutes later, something like this, they no one shows, no cop shows up. So she calls 911 again and says, are they on their way, whatever, blah, blah, blah. They say, yes, someone's on this, their way, or however it went down. Cops show up. She wa This is in the alley, okay? Okay. They pull up in the alley. She's outside in her pajamas. Okay. And... The two cops are in the squad, and I think the guy that's on trial right now, the one that shot her, is um, the one on trial, and I think he was in the driver's seat, and the other cop was in the passenger seat. Okay. I, I, I had to check on that to verify that, but anyway, either way, the cop that shot this woman had to reach around, over his partner to do it. Okay. Right. So if the if the driver was in the if the shooter was in the driver's seat, then he had to go to the right and go, like basically in front of he put his arm in front of his partner's chest and shoot that gun. Right. So his or either way, if she was on the other side of the car, I think she was on the passenger side. I think she approached the vehicle, on the, the cop car on the passenger side, and the the guy on trial that shot her is the one driving. Okay. okay. So he actually pulls his gun and shoots her. 
over his partner. He puts his gun, you know what I mean, in front of his partner. And his his thing was he saw fear in his partner's eyes, and he thought that his partner could not unholster his gun. And this woman raised her hand, and he thought she was armed. This is the woman that called them reporting the rape. Right. She's standing in the alley behind her house in her fucking PJs, and I'm sorry, if you would have first pulled up on that woman, you would have seen, because you know how the cops do, they put the lights on and shit. Sure, sure. You would have seen that woman who did not have a fucking weapon. So yeah. no way in hell were you in fear for your fucking wife, dude. Uh, that's or your standard, partner. That's a standard excuse. Uh, uh, anyway, it was tragic because the lady is originally from uh, Australia. And, you know, she was engaged to be married to this guy that they met. It was like this huge love story that they had. And it's just tragic. And you know what? I know this cop's going to get off. I just know it. Oh, sure. All he's got to do is say, say you He know. was in fear for his life or his part. He felt his partner's life was in danger. Sure. And that's what he testified today. And that's exactly what he said. Yep, yep. But, I, you know, and it's just, it's, it's sickening because anybody else that does this, they go to fucking prison. They go to fucking prison for murder. Right. Okay? Right. You shoot somebody in fucking cold blood, you're going to fucking murder, dude. Or prison. You know? You murdered someone. But these cops do it left and right every fucking day. Every yeah. goddamn day. Yeah. And the one that really pisses me off is when they have someone in cuffs and they start beating them. Hell, they got. I, like, saw, I saw a video. What, the, get, what a pussy! I saw a video. This guy was strapped yeah. strapped down to a hospital bed. He's yeah. in a hospital. I saw that. And, and the and the cop just beat the shit out of him. Started punching him in his fucking face. Yeah, and he's he's strapped no way, in he freaking bed. No he himself at all. <laughs> Yeah, it, this is recent. This was like the other day. Yeah, I, I just saw it, I think, this morning, uh, you know. Just like, I, mean, I, I, I can't even guys, watch, watch those know, videos anymore. And then I always get the argument, well, if something happened to you, who, what would you do? Who would you, I mean, like, I don't, you know. You gotta call them bastards, I mean, they'll fucking kill me. fucking cop. <laughs> you call them up, I'll they're gonna. fucking dead or beat the piss out of. Right. Charge. You know? And then they'll charge you with assaulting a cop because cause right. you got... Right, and you, you got, know what the thing that sucks about this one in Minneapolis <laughs> because is you, that she's trying to do a good deed, you people. Yeah. She thinks someone's being sexually assaulted in her alley, and she does what m most people would do. Call 911. Right. Guess what? She, fuck, she got killed in her, in her alley right behind her house. Right. By a fucking scared old fucking trigger-happy fucking pig. Yeah, well, he was probably pissed off. You know, he had to he had to leave the donut shop when she called. Right, and, going just oh, a sexual assault, supposed sexual assault in progress. Yeah, so he was yeah. pissed off. He, because, like I said, they didn't show up right away. She had to call twice. She calls nine one one twice, and she ends up getting killed. Yeah, to report a sexual assault of not, she's not even involved in the thing. Right. You know, and, and she goes out to meet the cops or whatever. Yeah, it's crazy. And she goes up to the car, and then she raises her hand a little bit, and the guy thinks she's got a weapon, and he fucking shoots her and kills her. Yeah. One shot killed her. The first shot killed her. I think it was only one shot. And then he testifies today that how bad he felt when he realized that she was not armed. It's like, dude. You should have realized that when you well, pulled up on the well, let's, scene. Let's, say, let's, say, uh, let's just say she was armed. And right. What, the, was, he, was she posing a threat in any way? Right. Exactly. <laughs> no. You know, no. she's trying to help somebody that she thinks is getting sexually assaulted in her fucking alley. You know, so armed or not, you know, it's like... It's, right. It's just yeah. so... It's just so tragic. I mean, it, it happens every day. All of these incidents are tragic, all yes, right? Absolutely. But this one just really fucking irks me. Just really got me when it happened. Yeah, and now it's on trial. So it's back in the news and everything. It's just like, right. you got to be fucking kidding me. Watch, this guy's going to get off. 
Uh, like, and it's a jury trial. Oh, yeah. It's a jury trial. I guarantee you this cop's going to get off. Sure. Yeah, they always do. Yeah. Even with a jury trial, it's supposed to be your peers or whatever. Yeah, it's a jury full because of cops. He, the cops are still glorified. A, ju a jury full People, of cop suckers. Right. People still look up to the cops. Yeah, it's disgusting. They do, you know? And you guys need to realize who the fuck... Do you realize who they work for? Yeah. They don't work for you. No. You do not pay them. They don't work for you. They work for who they get their fucking check from. They, they don't care about you. They don't work for you. It's... Wake the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Come on. Absolutely. Figure it out. Same with the fucking politicians. They're bought and fucking paid for. Yep. Wake up. You got you, you, you're selling yourself short if you think you got it all figured out and you got you're all oh yeah the Republicans the Democrats and this whole thing you're, you're <laughs> fucked you're selling yourself fucking short yeah you're being remaining ignorant on purpose yes you are all right yes you are it's like why would you choose to fucking be ignorant well lots of people do yeah. anyway um back to the fucking pollution. Here, I linked the story in there. Yeah, I got it. The U.S. military's toxic legacy. Anyway, that's just it's just a small, short little story, little blurb. But you know, there's other stories out there about this. This isn't the only one, but it's true. The military is the biggest polluter of the planet. The U.S. Right. military, right, right? And all the other militaries around the world. Yeah. So you know, quit. You know, yeah, you throw some plastic in the garbage. You're supposed to feel this fucking immense guilt because, oh, my God, how dare you? You know? Right. But, yeah, the military can leave uranium fucking shit wherever the fuck they want. Nothing happens. No one cares. And then someone's trying to tell me that fucking Congress, the people I elected, which I didn't because I don't vote. The people that I elected okay this practice, which is true. Government's evil. They suck. They're dirty. They're nasty. They stink. They don't give a fuck. Right. They don't give a fuck. The only thing they really give a fuck about is controlling. Control. Yeah. Control of every fucking thing. Control of your fucking life. All right. They're <laughs> hoping that you're so fucking naive and stupid... That you actually just run out there and get a fucking flu shot because they told you to. And sure. the FDA approved it. They want you to fucking just run out there and get that fucking flu shot. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. They they want, oh, yeah. You'll feel better because you're, you're protecting yourself and your family. Yeah. They play that card. The the whole, oh, if you love your family, you'll, you'll get the flu shot. It's like, fuck you. Are you really fucking kidding me right now? Yeah. Anyway, you see what's up on, uh, up there on the screen now? Hang on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's one of them kissing bugs. I, yeah, I have yeah. found two in these at my house, and it freaked me out, dude. It's All right. Well, the first I, one I, that I, I saw, was like two years ago. I just saw people talking about it here in the chat this week. So when anyway, I saw yep. this story, I thought I'd share. It's on uh, yeah, WAD. They're not good. If you see one, seriously, kill it, but don't throw it out. Like, you're supposed to, like, put them in alcohol or something. Okay, You're supposed you... to, like, yeah, they're not good, dude. And right. I have seen two of them in my house. Okay, this and big... I freaked out. And I saw one at work at my old job. Yeah. And I said to the lady, I go, do you have a dog? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh. And she's like, why? I'm like, because they like areas where dogs are, where animals are. Yeah. Anyway, here's the story. Okay, uh, it's on WGNTV.com. CDC warns of dangerous kissing bug spreading into several states. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Pro... whatever, uh, is, is warning residents in the United States that the deadly kissing bug has made its way to dozens of states, including Illinois. Chagas disease yep. earns the name the, the kissing bug uh, because the bugs that transmit the disease typically bite people's faces. Yeah. Uh, symptoms can include fatigue, fever, rash, and swelling, uh, but severe cases can lead to stroke or heart failure. Uh, well, that's extreme. <laughs> the, the, the kissing bug can also make pets sick, 
Researchers yep. say the parasite can infect dogs with yep. severe heart disease, although many don't so show symptoms. Uh, right. The CDC says to prevent infestation, have pets sleep indoors, seal cracks and gaps around windows, walls, yep. and use screens on uh, doors and windows. Right. So uh, yeah, I don't I don't think they're out here out west yet, but uh, no, they are. They're down there. They originated down south, Jim. All right. Well, it doesn't it doesn't give that information you got here. Um, you got them. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm just saying, they, when I first looked it up like two years ago, when I saw one and it freaked me out because I'd never seen a bug that looked like that before. That's what made me look it up is I'd never seen one before. And so I look it up and I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, that's what was in my house. And I, at first I'm like, no, maybe it's something that looks like it. No, I'm convinced now that's what exactly what it was. Right. And so anyway, that freaked me out. I didn't think nothing of it. I killed it. I threw it out. So then the next time I see one, I totally freaked out. I'm like, oh, my fucking God, because it was, like, in the kitchen. And my dog, we have our dog kennel in the kitchen. This is when we had our older dog, yeah. old dog. Yeah. And I see one, and I'm like, fucking A. I was so pissed. And then um, I saw one at work, my old job. And the lady, it, I don't know if it was at work or if she brought it in from her house, you know, because they'll, like, ride in your pants or something. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. And so anyway, I'm like, oh, my God, that's one of them kissing bugs. And I made her look it up right there. I'm like, look it up. I'm like, this is not a good thing. Yeah. She's, and she's like freaking out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, but it's not it's not a thing to mess around with. It's a true thing. Absolutely not, yeah. It's not a good If you see one in your house, you need to take steps to make sure they don't none come back. Oh, okay? Yeah. And they, they do say that, you know, like the um, DNR yeah. – like the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources and even the University of Wisconsin Medicine uh -huh. or the University of Wisconsin System, right. they want people to send them to them. If they is because like they said, they're progressing up into the northern states now. Yeah. You know, and what of this have to do with transport? This oh. shit they ride on trucks or something. They get in a truck right. and they fucking put a, get on a fucking grocery bag of potatoes or something and you got one. You know what I mean? Oh, if, yeah. Yeah. You know, even if they're not native or normal up in the northern climates it's summer it's going to be summer now it's warming up they can live up here oh right easily yeah yeah and i was like because when i first looked it up they said they're not normally in the northern states normally just down south in the middle of the country but nope now they're up north too they say illinois but i've seen two in wisconsin this was like three two three years ago yeah so but yeah, you, don't. You, know, yeah. you can spread borax around, and that'll take care of it. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of natural things you can do to keep bugs right. out, and not just those bugs. Oh, well, but yeah, borax bugs is the too. best. So, uh, anyway, what? this story, this next story, goes with that previous one, uh, not directly, but indirectly, uh, just because it's about bugs and disease. This mm -hmm. is on uh, LouRockwell.com. Lyme disease: the CDC's greatest cover-up, and what they don't want you to know. Right. So, Lyme disease, do you have it? Mm -hmm. If you did, you probably wouldn't know unless you're one of the chronic sufferers that have had to visit over 30 doctors to get a proper diagnosis. Right. Lyme disease tests are highly inaccurate, yep. often inconclusive or indicating false negatives. Why? Because this clever bacteria has found a way to dumb down your immune system and yep. white blood cells so that it's not detectable in treat until treatment is initiated. Right. To diagnose a Lyme properly, you must see a Lyme literate MD, LLMD, <laughs> severe. Uh, however, more and more doctors are turning their backs on patients due to the sheer fear of losing their practices. Right. Insurance companies and the CDC will do whatever it takes to stop chronic, chronic Lyme disease from being diagnosed treated or widely recognized. Right. They don't want you to think it's a real thing. As, as an increasingly common disease. Uh, right. Lyme is considered by the medical field to only transmit by the way of a tick infected with bacteria. However, the CDC itself admits that under uh, that it is underreported and believes there are between 300,000 to half a million new cases every year. Yep. Uh, I believe that. That makes Lyme disease almost twice as common as breast cancer and six times more common than HIV AIDS. Wow. Uh, where where are all these new cases coming from? 
It's interesting to note since uh, Avril Lavigne recently went public with her chronic Lyme disease battle, mm -hmm. uh, mainstream news outlets like the Daily Mail have been mentioning Lyme can be transmitted by mosquitoes too. Oh, really? Yeah. So when, when see, they didn't, they haven't been saying yeah, that. No, they don't want you to know. I, I don't know why they don't want you to know, but they don't want you to know. Uh, with, with, I mean, well, you you could have it right now. I could have it. We don't know. You know though. You, no, if you no. did, I know well, a person that has if, it really if, bad. If it's yeah, if you don't have the chronic, it's chronic. I know yeah. a person that has it chronically, and it's weird. And I know other people have talked. I've heard other people talking about this, and it <laughs> does. It moves around your body. You know, we're sitting here. We're it's talking really about really weird because this person that I know, like they'll wake up and they'll like their feet will be swollen, their ankles. Yeah. The next day they wake up and their like wrists will be swollen. We're, we're sitting here talking about these bugs and disease, and it's making me itch. <laughs> that happens. That's, that's psychosomatic. Yeah. It says when Lyme is not detected in the early stages, it does become chronic. It uh, does. A condition which the CDC and IDSA both deny even exists. Right. They've been denying it since the get-go. They will continue to deny it because if there's one thing insurance companies hate, it's chronic disorders they have to spend time and money treating. Uh, therefore, a panel with ties to insurance companies gathered to write up official Lyme guidelines that assure patients are only allowed a few weeks of antibiotic treatment are not to be diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease, even if clear symptoms persist and invade the nervous system. Over right. They're like, oh, well, we don't know what you got. You got a virus. It's like, I don't have a virus for three fucking years, bitch. You know, uh, come on. Yeah, listen to this part. Over half of the panelists who wrote the IDSA Lyme guidelines announcing that crime, chronic Lyme is not real, including the panel chairman, have obvious conflicts of interest, including financial yeah. interests in drug companies, diagnostic tests, and patents. Always comes down to money. As well as consulting agreements with the insurance companies, researchers, and scientists. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it goes on, but uh, and and there's also a video here about it, but um, uh, and so you guys may want to check that out later on. Uh, the the link will be in the post show blog, but here it is for you now in case you want to check it out further. Sweet. Um, cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've been bitten by ticks before. Me uh, too. I, I, not I, not really bad, but ticks generally don't <laughs> like me, so I'm lucky there. Well, I'm lucky I, they don't like well, me. I've, I've had them sucking, you know. Juice it up, juice it up on my blood. Yeah, so, I got, yeah. I got, made sure I got the vaccine for the dog. I mean, it's my dog, you know. Yeah, but even that, a vaccine for for Lyme, right. disease, Lyme disease is not real. Right. Yeah. But they say it is. They say, and it's not just ticks. It prevents other bugs from biting them or something. I don't know. Yeah. You just fucking kind of fucking go with it, you know. I don't know, because I'm not no vet, you know. <laughs> I'm a human. I'm not a dog. I don't, you know. <laughs> All I right. Mean, so, so um, do, do you like the band Madness? I don't even know that band. You don't know Madness? They're a ska no, band. No, no. I have no idea who that is. They're, they're a ska band. Well, anyway, I like ska, so I'd probably like them then. Anyway, they have a song called Our House. Okay. And this is a cover of that song that just came out today. All right. Let's hear it. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. That's the Traveling Wilburys there, end of the line. Cowboy Tech Request. Uh, before that, we had uh, Haley Reinhardt covering Buffalo Springfields for what it's worth. A very fine job of it, too. And we kicked it off with uh, the Maraccioli family. Not a Leo Maraccioli song. A Maraccioli family song uh, doing Our House. And he did that because he's selling his house. And uh, that, that uh, you know, I should probably put that link into the, into the post-show blog, too. Because, you know, you may want to go over there and buy that house. You, too, could live, or you could live in that house if you... Uh, uh, Norway. Oh yeah, hey. Yeah. Uh, linking yeah. me up, linking me up. Two hundred, two hundred and forty k. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> no hey, more. <laughs> well, uh, well, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you can go over there and check it out. Live there. Have a good old right. time. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, he did a great job on that cover. So uh, oh, they, yeah, they cool. did. I don't I don't know what his his wife and daughter's names are. But, no, uh, but they were really cute in there. Oh yeah, they're, they're great, <laughs> great family. You are not a family man, Graham, but uh, no, know. no. But they they seem like they're having a good old time there together. Right, and, making the video uh, and, and you know that type of uh, thing. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's kind of so up to date, updating on the um, kid that got thrown off the third floor balcony at the Mall of America. Yeah. Um, he's alert. He's conscious. He's out of um, ICU. Right. And actually, his GoFundMe page made a million dollars today. Oh, or, I, I heard he, he could be home by June. Yes, and you know what? This is awesome. And this is the power of positive thinking as far as I'm concerned, okay? They interviewed the uh, first responders that got to the scene. Yeah. It was three of them. And when they got there, there was a couple nurses there already tending to the kid. There was a bunch of bystanders around helping out and trying to. There was actually people that were chasing the guy that did it. Um, it was just like a group effort. They said, and everyone just came together. They said as soon as they got there, they saw that kid. They got him up in the stretcher as fast as they could. They rushed him right out of the fucking door. Right. You know, as fast as they could, and they got there within minutes, which is probably what saved the kid's friggin' life. Probably. Um, yeah. But anyway. Um, just a really freak thing that happened. The guy that did it's obviously fucking psycho, nuts. Right. Um, really mentally ill, most likely. Um, but anyway, at least that was good news from that story because that was a really distressing story when it first happened. Yeah, yeah, my bro. But, um, yeah, they they actually, the GoFundMe, I mean, this obviously touched people's hearts if they made a million dollars on their GoFundMe page. Oh, sure. So, you know, I think everyone's just horrified. And just, wow. I think I, for me, when I first heard about it, and my kids have been there to that facility, to the Mall of America. They they went with my mom one time when they were like about five or six or something, you know. Right, right. And uh, I just it, 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 I just can't imagine that happening. I, yeah, no, it's awesome, man. Meter, it's such good news. You who, know, who I, I was hoping I was hoping there would be a good outcome on this one, and apparently it's it's looking up. So, um. Yeah. So, yeah. Such a senseless thing to do. And how dare somebody do that to another person? You right. know, you you don't have a right to go fuck somebody up like that. Uh, and then for what purpose? The guy had no purpose right. in doing he it. He was just off or something. He said he had a fit of rage or something because he got rejected by a woman. And, and that's and, why he got pissed off and he just grabbed his kid and throws him off the edge. It's right. like, come on. Right. Something's wrong. And he had been banned from this facility. I mean, they should have put a fucking lifetime ban on the guy the first time he was banned. He was banned because he caused other problems before in other places. Yeah. And it's like, you know, but anyway, it's a good outcome. And I just wanted to touch base on that because I had talked about that, I believe. Oh, sure. Yeah. Or I had talked about it in the chat, at least. No, we talked about it out here. Oh, okay, that's what I thought, yeah. And so it's like, oh, my freak. Because I missed last week because I was at the concert, so, you know, I get off, can't remember what the hell. Because, yeah. you know, I don't really do a lot of plenty on this show. I'm sure that's obvious. But anyway, um, good outcome there. Let's see what else I had bookmarked. All right, well, I have one here. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, this is uh, from Mercola, blogs.mercola.com. Mm -hmm. um, and... <laughs> this could be you, Moose, or it could be, well, anyway. Uh, salmonella outbreak reaches 10 states. Are you at risk? Uh, the salmonella outbreak has sickened 117 people across 10 states, according to the food safety alert from the CDC. Uh, so uh, the CDC and the FDA believe the source of the outbreak is contaminated pre-cut melon packaged at Cato Foods LLC in Illinois. Uh, the company voluntary, voluntarily recalled pre-cut watermelon, honeydew melon, cantaloupe, and pre-cut fruit medley products containing one of the melons, which were distributed in 10 different states. The recalled <laughs> products were packaged in clear plastic containers. Uh, <laughs> Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan, Minnesota... Missouri, Nebraska, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. Wisconsin. 
What is it again? A watermelon? Did you post uh, the it, link yet? It, no, I did. It's several, several. Uh, it's uh, let me see what the, the melons were again. Uh, pre-cut watermelon, honeydew melon, cantaloupe, and oh, okay, it's pre-cut stuff though. It's and, the stuff that you go buy. And it's already meat. pre-cut for you. Yeah, yeah. It's in the plastic containers. Right. So yeah, I don't. I'm not at risk because I don't buy that. Okay. I, I I buy the whole cantaloupe or the whole the whole melon. I don't buy that pre-cut right. stuff at all. Anyway, it says more specifically, the contaminated melon was sold at Kroger. Okay, we don't have Kroger here. Under the Renaissance Food Group label and the Boar's Head private label at, at Target. Oh, Target. Under yeah. Garden Highway label, Trader Joe's, under Trader Joe's label. Walmart, under the Freshness Guarantee. Yeah, Fresh Salmonella Guarantee label. Uh, and Amazon Whole Foods and the Whole, Mood, Whole Foods Market label. Uh, Ohio residents are among those most affected by the outbreak, reporting 31 cases of salmonella-related disease. And then it talks about all the other kind of crap that, and then it goes on to talk about other foodborne protection and stuff like that, and uh, so uh, whatever. Um, basically, just a public service announcement there. If you live in any of those areas, don't buy the pre-cut melons because you may die. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> I hate that pre-packaged stuff. It's like if you're gonna get fruit, get the whole fruit and cut it yourself. That prepackaged, you know what I mean? And yeah. even like the spinach that I buy, it says it's triple washed, which it, I don't wash it any more than that. I just say fuck it, you know? Right. Um, and I don't buy organic. You know, I think some of that organic is just fucking bullshit. I don't think it's really organic. I think it's just fucking packaged that way. Yeah. So how do you well, really know? How, well, can you look at a, a fucking organic spinach package and a fucking regular spinach package and tell me the difference? No. What is the difference between them two products? Except that it says organic well, on one and not on the other. It, it's supposedly it's like, a cer- you. it's supposedly a certification that you get for growing. Yeah, right. Uh, certification grow, brought on by who? The FDA. That's the, the that's US the problem. There's the problem right there. That's that's the key. <laughs> All right. I'm so sorry, you, you you're you, gonna label something organic? I don't fucking really know where this fucking came from. Unless you're gonna fucking put a story in the back of where this actually came from. Well, you can look you know? at the little. There's a little little tiny white sticker they put on there with a code on it. And, and right. you, can, you can use those codes to, to, to see what kind of pesticides. Even then, how are do we fucking trust? How do we know that? How well, do we well know? you don't. How you do you don't. Really you know? just don't. Um, you don't. So, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. don't. Uh, okay, spend more money because it's organic. Okay, so you think you're you're buying a better product, you know, that's better for you, and you're not getting as many chemicals. Or, you're fooling your fucking self. <laughs> Absolutely. When it comes to spinach. You're fooling your fucking self. It's the same goddamn spinach in both packages. I guarantee and, you it is. I and, guarantee you it is. And and you know the the health food nuts they eat a lot of kale, and kale yeah, they, is the, is the one know. one of the most pesticide heavy plants exactly. out there. Right. So uh, yeah. And, anyway. So you right, were ta- Rob. The only way to really know for sure is to grow it yourself. But then you don't know if chem, you know, so you got to put chemtrail protection over your fucking plant, <laughs> or the neighbor's going to use Roundup. So you better fucking make sure the wind ain't blowing yeah, right. Filtered you, water right and shit. everything, right? You know, it's everywhere. You you, you you can escape it a little bit, you know, and you can do your best, but you, you really can't escape it completely. No, even if you grow no. your own food, the soil's got radiation in it. You know, you're fucked. You know, you're going to have, yeah, well, the soil's still going to have the dirt, the fake dirt or whatever they make. You don't know what chemicals are in that potting soil they, or the dirt, you know. Right. The dirt's fucking been poisoned. The dirt's even poisoned. <laughs> true, so true. We're, we're fucked. Yeah. I mean, the best you can do is the best you can do. And growing your own is the best way. I'm not I'm not trying to diss that because that is truly the best way. But I'm not saying you're you're totally escaping all this chemicals and shit because you're growing your own. That just you can't do it. It's not possible. Well, no, but you're you're much better off. Oh yeah. Wait <laughs> big time. Much better off. Yeah. So anyway, you were you were talking right. about Earth Day earlier. Yes. And Earth Day started in uh, what, nineteen seventy, right? Yep, nineteen seventy. Okay. okay. Earth Day, not a single environmental prediction of the <laughs> last 50 years has yep. come true. I saw not that. Not a single one. And this is on right. what, what's up with that dot com. Uh, I saw this. Yep. this. I didn't look at it, but I saw it really. All right. This Earth Day, it almost feels like we should be carving some turkey. Why? 
because we have a lot to be thankful for since that first day event occurred 49 well, years ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, zero for 50, Rob. Yeah, batting, batting a thousand. With the Absolutely. Since we should be thankful. That the, oh, yeah, we should be thankful. That, that the gloom and doom predictions made throughout the last several decades have not come true. Fear-mongering about explosive population growth, food crisis, and the imminent depletion of natural resources have been a staple of Earth Day since 1970. And the common thread among them is that they've stirred up a lot more emotions than facts. Here. By the year 2000, uh, if present trends continue, we will be using up crude oil at such a rate that there won't be any more crude oil. Ecologist uh, Kenneth Watt warned around the time of the first Earth Day event. You'll drive up to the pump and say, fill her up, buddy, and he'll say, I'm sorry, we don't have none. Uh, Watt, Watt also warned of global cooling and nitrogen buildup rendering all of the planets unstable. <laughs> or the planet's land unstable. Um, this issue, however, is that present trends do not continue. That They change dramatically for a number of reasons. Innovation happens. Consumer behavior changes. Importantly, price signals play a huge role in communicating information to energy products as well as consumers. Higher prices at the pump encourage companies to extract and supply more oil. Expensive gas prices, meanwhile, motivate, motivate entrepreneurs to invest in alternatives to oil. Whether that's batteries, natural gas vehicles, or biofuels, drivers will examine their consumption as well. Whether carpooling, finding alternative modes of transportation, or over time purchasing more fuel-efficient vehicles. Here we are, 19 years past Watt's arbitrary deadline, and drivers are pulling up to the pump saying, fill her up, buddy, figuratively speaking, as Watts didn't foresee self-serve stations, uh, without any cause for concern. Thanks to human ingenuity and entrepreneurial drive of energy producers, oh, and by the way, it doesn't mention it here, but the fact that oil is not fossil fuel, it is abiotic. It, re it regenerates itself there in the earth. Uh, it's not made from dead dinosaurs, <laughs> but whatever. The United States is now the world's largest oil producer, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, which probably a lie, but that's what they say. Um, <laughs> while the global energy poverty and food insecurity remain a pressing challenge, the problems are getting much better, not worse. World Bank and UN data show extreme poverty and global hunger has noticeably dropped since 1970. And according to the International Energy Agency, the number of people without access to electricity fell below 1 billion for the first time ever. Clearly there is work to be done, but some things are pointing in the right direction. Uh, in the U.S., a common perception is that the country's environmental state is deteriorating. On the contrary, through investment in new technologies and through legislation, environmental trends have improved significantly in the U.S. Pollutants uh, known to cause harm to the public health and environmental environment are declining. According to the EPA's latest air quality trends report, the combined emissions of the six common air pollutants have decreased 73% between 1970 and 2017. We should be thankful for all the economic liber liberties that provide people with the means to protect the environment. Uh, anyway, you, you can uh, go on and read through this. Also, you can follow the link over onto Bangor Daily News. Um, and they speak a lot about these various government agencies uh, giving you various numbers. But, eh, you know, you can't really trust any of their numbers because they lie about everything. Yeah, you can't uh, however, trust however, the the, the fact remains um, that none of them have come true. None of these dire predictions right. have come the true. Predictions. It's not the uh, the end of snow like uh, Al Gore predicted, or right. What all all kinds trust of various. Me, we did not have the end of snow here. We had ninety inches of snow in Eau Claire this last winter. So yeah, all, all kinds of various. Uh, what the fuck? Um. 
doom and gloom predictions by those that want to take advantage of you. Um, right. Yeah, so... Maybe. Okay, so this disturbs me, though. All right, go ahead. These these things that they make for babies, it's like they make something, and it sells fine, but then they're like, well, we should improve on it. You know, I don't know if that's what happened in this case, but these sleepers are these baby... They're sleepers, they're called. It's a rock and play sleeper. Anyway, right. it's this thing that you put your kid in and it rocks itself. Right. Which normally these when I, when my kids were young, little, which was eighteen, nineteen years ago, they just bounced. They just did a slight bounce because they were like they were a metal frame that had a little bit of a spring or a bounce to them. Sure. And the the kid would just just rock it itself, basically. Yeah. So then they had to come up with this that like rocks. It actually does a rocking motion. Mm -hmm. Well, five babies have died. How? They get. They must get wrapped up in something in there and get choked to death, or asphyxiate, the, or they must get turned around in there and then they can't breathe. That's my own thing. Is they get turned face down. Yeah. And they can't breathe and they fucking die of asphyxiation. But I, I haven't gotten into the story to oh, see exactly, okay, okay. Here, said, here exactly says, what happens. But, here, here, here it um, says, uh, the infants rolled from their back to their stomach right, they, while Right, they rolled from their back to their stomach, and when they rolled in their stomach, their face was like in the bottom of that thing, and they couldn't breathe. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this well, that is, sucks. I mean, what? I said, well, that sucks. Yeah, and so they recall all of them now. Like, at first it was just some of them. Now it's all of them. So don't get these things. If you got them, get rid of them. Oh, wait. No, wait. What? 32. What? Baby fatalities. I thought it said five. It's, at first it did. What? Hang on. Where does, let me, at least five babies. Okay. But it says, the, the headline, if you read that headline, Graham, on that link I post, it says 32 baby fatalities. Oh, okay. Oh, since 2012. Oh, so, right. so this has been going on for seven fucking years. 32 baby deaths over the last 10 years. And they're just now recalling them. Okay, people should be pissed. This, they've been law What? So the CDC has a limit, and how many product, how many, how many babies can be killed before they actually recall a product? That's fucking sick, dude. Yeah. That's disgusting. I didn't even know that. Like, no one knew it. Did you? No. Nope. They let this information get out that babies were dying from these products. No, it's not. You can't blame the mother totally, Rob. Because the product's meant for it to be where you can set your baby down when they're being fussy or whatever, and they'll sleep there. Like, my kids used to sleep in the bouncy chairs. Not, not, I wouldn't let them sleep in there the whole time. But the other thing is I, they would eat, they would hold their bottles, and I would put them in there to feed them. This is, we're talking little babies. We're talking newborn babies. Yeah. We're talking little babies, you know, that, that, that are defenseless. And yes, I agree. The parent, it is on the, but you trust a product, you know. I know, but you still, you gotta watch the product kids. Safe, but I get it. Not every product, no product's totally safe. You see, you see, any you, product, no matter you, what it is, I don't you, care what it is. It's not totally safe. You still gotta, you still gotta watch the kid. Oh yeah, you still gotta watch the kid, but you know, yeah, I've, I, but oh. since 2012, there's been 32 baby deaths. Yeah. That's a lot to not let people be aware of it. You know, that, hey, babies are dying in these things. Oh, yeah, not, you know, still selling them, whatever. All right. That's that's bad. So, um, you own a dog, right? Yes, I have a dog. And most, a lot of the people here in, in the chat, they own dogs, right? Yeah, I think he owns me, but he said well, whatever. whatever. So, anyway, yeah. a, lot, a, lot of the, a lot of the chatters here and people, RLM people, they all have own, own dogs. We do. Have, a have lot of dogs. dog lovers in the chat room. Right. And yeah. animal cat lovers, too. No, just talk about dogs. Okay, but yeah, but there's animal lovers yeah. in general in the chat room. You're all racist. Go ahead. You're all racist. What? <laughs> Why? No, I'm not. <laughs> all right, from the Gateway Pundit. 
dogs branded white supremacist as social justice warriors <laughs> seemingly run out of people to call racist. Is this the onion? No, it's it's the Gateway Pundit. Are you sure? Absolutely. Is this a satire site? No, Gateway no, Pundit? no, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, this so, is like a real, true, honest to God story. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Social justice warriors. Uh, okay. so, social justice warriors have apparently run out of people, people and objects to declare as racist, and now they're taking aim at man's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> ben Falding, a socialist. With, I'm sorry, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry. All right, Ben Falding, a socialist with bylines in the Washington Post tablet mag, and the forward has declared that dogs are a tool of white supremacy and gentrification. That's not just my opinion. This is, the re this is research that shows how white newcomers' dog-walking routes stake out territory, and white owners use their pets to socialize with other white owners, excluding minorities. Now, I, I, I've owned many dogs in the past, and I can guarantee freaking tea ya, I'm out walking my dog. There's other people out there, and they're not all white, and you don't care if they're white or not. They're a dog lover. You're a dog lover. You guys talk while your dogs are hanging out at the park. <laughs> anyway, so this guy thinks that somehow. Uh, anyway, it says it's not just folly expressing the sentiment. Alicia Sanchez Gill, <laughs> the interim executive director of Safe Spaces D.C., who safe spaces tweeted, white <laughs> folks, I don't care how nice your dog is. Dogs have been used of, as a tool of white control, dominance, and violence from slavery through civil rights to police dogs today. I've said to friends, often half jokingly, that I love dogs but hate white people's dogs. <laughs> what, oh my God. What, is, what is come happening? Come on, motherfuckers. You got, come on. What is happening at my alma mater? Stop. Uh, how Stop is, already. The, the, the perfect example of why white folks believe their dogs have more humanity and deserve you more. Be fucking kidding and, me. and deserve more comfort than black no. people. You think no. your dog? <laughs> your dog? <laughs> fucking no! This is a non-argument. This isn't even to be talked about right now. No, no, no. The outrage over the outrage the outrage over dogs, or more specifically, white people's dogs, comes in. Oh my fucking god! Comes in response to a dispute over some grass at Howard University. Oh, my fuck. Uh, grass? <laughs> like pot? Or just... Eh. Grass, grass, where people sit and, you know, have a picnic. Uh, or oh, have my lunch fucking God. On campus. It says, you guys uh, are insane. People, you guys, you people are fucking insane. Even the person that wrote the article is in fucking insane. The Root, the, the Root reported that people on campus were upset that white people walk their dogs. Oh, my there. God. Uh, Howard University's yard isn't a dog park. You've got to be kidding But me. the historic black university in Washington, oh, D.C. has been reduced to as much by colonizing residents who have <laughs> made their homes and lassies. Uh, oh my God! Anyway, there's 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 more to the story. There's this tweets. story should not even been written. There's tweets. There's okay. photos. Yeah, you're all you're all freaking racist. Oh you my own, God! You own a dog and you're white. You fucking what the fuck? <laughs> you own a dog Do and you're white. People actually believe in this shit. Do they actually like read that? Well, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Red the, dog the and SJ, racist. The SJWs believe it. <laughs> The SJ, SJWs believe it absolutely. <laughs> yeah. They're fucking insane. <laughs> they're, they're fucking dumb. Sorry, <laughs> yes, they they're are. fucking stupid. Hey, Hansel didn't, didn't see you there. <laughs> they can't see their fucking nose. Oh, it, it's just ridiculous. It, it's, 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 it, it's, it, in front of their face. They're fucking stupid. Oh, but speaking of dogs and, and Earth Day and climate yes. change and... Another yes. another story on what's up with that. Yeah. New York to ban hot dogs. Oh fucking Christ's sake. Because climate change. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> New York New York's famous hot dogs could soon be a thing of the past. Uh New York considers banning hot dogs and other processed meats over climate change. 
Yes, New York City may be on the verge of outlawing its signature encased meat. What? The hot dog, alongside other processed Next meat. Next thing you know, Chicago's going to be outlawing pizza. Yeah, and a bid to make New Yorkers more climate conscious. Yeah, they're going to be pissed off at, at somebody, for sure, for banning their hot dogs. What? what? Come on, you're going to put so many fucking hot dog vendors out of work. Radio stations. They have to go be greeters at Walmart or something. Come on, people. Come on. What are you <laughs> thinking? <laughs> I, I haven't even gotten to the good part yet. <laughs> Radio station <laughs> V100 reports that Mayor Bill de Blasio signed into law New, Bill York, de Blas Blasio. New York's own version of the Green New Deal last <laughs> week. <laughs> and... And part of the New York City I'm sorry, it's funny. Part of the New York City Green New Deal involves teaching New Yorkers to make healthy, environmentally friendly food choices by banning specific <laughs> problematic dishes Problematic from the, dishes from the, from the city People. menus. The plan, Z one hundred says, will cut purchases of red meat by fifty percent in its city controlled facilities such as hospitals, schools, and correctional facilities. Uh, the new commitment builds off the Meatless Mondays campaign that was adopted by New York City schools in 2017. New Yorkers will be able to keep their precious hot dog street carts, and tourists will still be able to fill up on dirty water dogs at Times Square, at least for now. The, the Green it's New Deal insane. prohibits facilities from buying and serving hot dogs and other processed meats in what? bulk to serve in city-run cafeterias mostly located in city office buildings. I have buildings. a fucking headache now. Thanks, Jim. But, no. <laughs> city office buildings, jails, and schools, which are interchangeable. Oh, yeah. What I of don't get, it. what I don't get, says the author, why is processed meat supposed to be less environmentally friendly <laughs> than unprocessed meat? Processed meat normally has non-meat fillers like breadcrumbs and other grains or cereals and traditionally includes animal parts which might otherwise be discarded. Yeah, which you don't want to be consuming well, yeah, necessarily. You, you, you it's don't, like the ooh. You don't want like to see how the sausage is made. No, I, you don't. I don't get how this is somehow supposed to be less eco-friendly than, say, eating beef steak and throwing the rest of the animal away. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Uh, people are fucking insane. That's uh, I, I, I don't I don't I don't think there's I don't think there's any other way to put it. Is people are just freaking insane. <laughs> All right, we're we're gonna do another set of music right here. Um, and this particular set is gonna be an all request set, and it's gonna be an all sock puppet request set. Ooh. <laughs> so, up, people. Yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy it. All right. That there was uh, Dire Straits doing a song called Skate Away. Before that was Mark Knopfler. Sound familiar? Doing a song called So Far From The Clyde. I was not familiar with that song. And we kicked it off with David Gilmore doing uh, Breathe. So uh, thanks for the request, Sock Puppet. Very good stuff. Appreciate yes, it. thank you. Yep, very good, very good. Very good. I love Dire Straits. I love Mark Knopfler. I mean, one of my favorite um, Dire Straits albums or songs is Love Over Gold. It's an instrumental. Yeah. But I love that song so much. Or, it's not totally instrumental, but... Um, I love that song so much, and that was one of my like, favorite favorite albums. The song, the album that that song was on, I can't remember if it was called Love. I think it's called Love Over Gold. It's named after that song, but um, very excellent band. Cool. Yep. Cool, cool, so cool. thank you for that set. Amazing. Very good. Yep. Excellento. What? I said excellento. Excellento indeed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I got my extra Blue Ox ticket sold. Um, I, one of the bartenders at the Corton House where I go, um, he's going to buy it for me. 
he's just going to make payments on it. <laughs> okay. Which is totally fine because he's a huge bluegrass fan. He's never been to Blue, Blue Ox yet. And actually, he's never been to a music festival oh. before. Now, he's not going with me. Don't, yeah, don't, no, don't. That, that's not the deal. No. He's way too young for me. <laughs> he has a girlfriend. It, no, he's not going. Yeah, with me. <laughs> Who's doing a little cradle, cradle rob in there? No, I'm not doing that shit. No, he, <laughs> he's, a, he's a really cutie pie. He's a really nice guy. He does a really nice guy, and he's actually trying to get into medical school, and um, to take the medical school like the the equivalency of the SAT. Yeah, it's called like the MCAT. And it costs like three hundred some dollars to take it each time, and he's taken it twice already. And so he's like trying to get into medical school, but he can't get past this test. You know, which is typical for a lot of people. It's not an easy test, dude. You know, it's 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 like the it's the medical doctor's equivalent of the SAT. This is after you've gone through four years of college already, right? You're trying to get into medical school. Right. Yeah. It's a rough road, dude. I'm sure I it mean, is. But anyway, I got the ticket sold. I'm really happy that he's buying it because he's never been to a festival. And what a, I mean, Blue Lock is your first festival? That's going to be kick-ass, right? Yeah, hell yeah, that's going to be cool. Yeah, that's going to be fucking kick-ass for him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, right on, dude. Excellent. He said, can I give you 50 bucks tonight just to hold it? I'm like, yeah, sure, you know. Right. I left it without getting them away from him, you know what I mean? Right, right. But I'm like, no, it's yours, dude. You know, it's yours. Okay, cool. And then his girlfriend came in, and I'm like, he can just make payments to me. I don't care. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like, she's like, he had to get new tires for his car. I'm like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Cause I've been there. I understand that problem. No doubt. You know. That's not that's not cheap. And the festival is until June. Yeah. So he'll be able to, you know, he'll pay it. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So anyway, besides that, it's just I talk about it because I'm just so stoked. Oh yeah. Well, I have like, I mean, come on, it's infamous string dusters. Right. It's Billy right. strings. It's okay. trampled by Trill. Wow. I mean, I could go on, but right there, those three bands alone. Yeah, that'll right there, that'll, that'll keep pay for it. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Charlie Parr. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. I mean, come on, you know. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, good stuff. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I'm so stoked. But anyway, um, so you have vermin in your yard, Helen Grimm? Oh, not not like you. I don't have as many. I mean, there's not rabbit poop all over the place. See, well, <laughs> I have I have a Jack Russell yeah. <laughs> dog. And we have a shit ton of rabbits. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have got a Jack Russell, right? Because maybe a German Shepherd wouldn't like want to chase after rabbits, but I don't. Sure it would. Any dog would chase a rabbit. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so it doesn't really matter the breed that you get. They're going to want to chase a fucking rabbit. Absolutely. But I have a dog that's like specifically breeded, bred to do that. Sure. They were bred to like My chase shit down and, and get it. Yeah, and hunt, yeah, they're hunting. They're uh, actually a hunting dog, Jack Russell. My my, my Rottweiler that I used to have, mm -hmm. um, the, a cat a cat got into the yard once. Oh God! Stupid ass cat. And, and yeah. it, it used to sit on the other side of the, the fence and tease my dog. Tease your dog? Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. Well, one one day I guess it was sitting up on top and it fell into the yard or jumped oh, in. Oh nice. I, 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 I don't cat know what was it, done, right? I don't I don't know what it did, but I have never seen. That dog moved that fast, <laughs> and it did grab that cat, and it was. And it did the shake. Oh yeah, it did the head shake. And it was done. And, right. And, uh, what? The cat was done. No, uh, it was actually still alive, just and barely. And the head shake, it was still alive. Just was barely, weather. just barely. I picked it up and I, okay. I, I dumped it over the fence. I didn't know if it was going to yeah. live or not. But it was gone the next day, so oh, I guess. Yeah, it was dead. So it yeah. either crawled away or somebody came and got it. I don't know. Either way. Uh, the cat was in really bad shape, and and my dog was grinning. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he was. He was like, "You, I was just waiting for that motherfucking day, you bitch." Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I love cats. I'm not, but the cat had it coming. Oh, right? freaking it right. Sounds like the cat. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. come on, motherfucker. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So right. anyway, oh uh, yeah, nice. 
But no, Jackson, you know, good thing I have a hole in that leash tonight because he would have been gone. Oh, right. He would have been fucking, and with the leash behind him, he wouldn't have cared. He would have been. Great. I mean, it's like, oh, I mean, so I really do need to get him to some agility training or something, you know, something, get him where yeah. he can run somewhere. Sure, sure. But uh, just taking him for a walk around the block, I've noticed, does wear him out. So right, he's right. still a puppers. He's still a little puppers. You know, he's not fully adult adult yet. So. No. Okay. But um, and it's not a long walk. It's, you know, it's five, six blocks. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, I, anyway. I have a story. I have a story I came across here okay. this week, and and I want you to tell me whether or not you've ever heard this concept before. And okay. maybe, maybe, if you recall, who you heard it from. Okay. Because they say it's a new theory. It says, a new theory on time indicates present and future exist simultaneously. You ever okay. heard anybody, you ever heard well, any, anybody mention that? Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. And, and, and who was that person? It was you. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, cool. And we didn't discuss this previously. No, he we didn't haven't. Didn't ask me that question. Yep. <laughs> I knew exactly. I knew it was him. Yep. According to a new controversial theory, everything around us is intricately planned, and each and every one's destiny has already been decided. The new uh -huh. the new theory suggests that time does not pass. And that everything is ever present. Wow! In fact, it, it, time is not linear as we've been thinking or told to believe all along. And everything around us is ever present, always there, always around. Uh, the researchers indicate that time should be regarded as a dimension of space-time, as relativity theory holds. So it does not pass by us in some way because space-time doesn't. Instead, oh. instead, time is part of the uniform, larger fabric of the universe, not something moving around inside it. Right. According to a scientist, everything that has happened and everything that will happen is, in fact, occurring at this very moment, moment as time is positioned in space. I believe it. The, the new theory proposed by Dr. Bradford Scow, an associate professor of philosophy at, the, at MIT, indicates that if we were to look down on the universe, we would actually observe time and events spreading out in all directions. So what does this mean? Well, it suggests that time as we know it is wrong, incorrect. In other words, it's not linear as we've been thinking all along. In fact, it's everything is is every time at, at now. It's always it's always here. It's always now. Um, the new theory d is detailed in Dr. Scow's book Objective Beginning, when he writes, "When you ask people, tell me about the passage of time, they usually make a metaphor. They say time flows like a river, or we move through time like a ship sailing through the sea." The author argues that we wouldn't want to believe in that unless I saw good arguments for it. In Objective Beginning, Scow aims to convince readers that things could hardly be otherwise. To do so, he spends much of the book considering comp uh, competing ideas about time. The ones that assume that time does pass or move by us in some way. I was interested in seeing what kind of view of the universe you would have if you took these metaphors about the passage of time very seriously. Uh, Scow says E equals what? He's got some weird what? <laughs> says uh, they say <laughs> he's got some code mixed in with his uh, his text here. Uh, Scow says the they say time flows like a river or we move through time. The author right. suggests oh, he's got some stuff repeated. I don't know what's <laughs> This is a weird article. Anyway, Dr. Scow believes that the so-called block universe, a theory which states that the past, present, and future exist simultaneously. In other words, this means that once an event has occurred, it continues to exist somewhere in space-time. The new controversial theory is backed up by Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Huh. 
which indicates that space and time are in fact part of our intricate four-dimensional structure where everything that has occurred has its own coordinates in space-time. He further details the block universe theory says you're spread out in time, something like the way you're spread out in space, but not located at a single time. Dr. Scow agrees that while things change and we see time as if it were passing, uh, Dr. Scow believes that we are in scattered conditions that different parts of time may be dotted around the infinite universe. So there you have it. They call it a new theory, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But not not quite so new. A uh, new theory. They, that's not. That's a bunch of shit, right well, there. Uh, uh, new you know, theory. Uh, they not never, the theory. The thing that it's new is a bunch of shit. They, they never asked me about it. That's all I know. I. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um. Okay. Have you ever seen a UFO? I think I have. All right. And if you saw... I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think I've seen some anomalies in the sky in my lifetime. I'm, like, old enough to say, yeah, I've seen some, you know, anomalies. All right. Well, if you see one in the future, time existing, all right, if you see one coming at, at some point in the uh, continuous t t space time... Um, <laughs> The U.S. Navy is setting up guidelines for reporting UFO sightings. Comment? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Can I mute? No, no? I, I just said comment. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't believe anything they fucking say. All right. The, the U.S. Navy is setting new guidelines for reporting unidentified aircraft entering U.S. aerospace, so no encounter with a UFO can be dismissed as irrelevant. Uh, the new Navy policy will ensure that all UFO sightings by sailors come under tight scrutiny instead of being underreported and feeding speculation of alien spaceships roaming the skies. Uh, po Politico reported Tuesday the sheer number of UFOs swarming around the Navy strike group and other military infrastructure, according to sailors, is what prompted the need for new reporting guidelines. So... I guess the the, the uh, aliens are after the Navy guys. I, I, yeah. the, the Navy spokesman has not provided any details about the encounters, but said that there have been a number of reports of unauthorized and or unidentified aircraft entering various military-controlled ranges and designated airspaces in recent years. Anyway, let's read the rest of this. It's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's all over here on USAHitman.com. Uh, and... Um, so, you know, they used to take uh UFO reports back in the day. Yeah. And then yeah. and then they stopped doing it. They 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 just said, "No, no, we're going to dismiss all." Yeah, cuz they don't want you to know about it. They don't want Nope. Yeah, we're going we're going we're going to like ignore it. Oh, yeah, you're not supposed to know about this super highly classified. Uh, right, something like that. <laughs> Top secret information. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chaos would ensue if we let this information be released. Even though everyone's, a bunch of people have seen them. Right. And all over the world. Not just in one country, all over the freaking world. These things have been spotted. They're all like, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, deny, 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 deny. Lie, lie, lie. Yeah. That's the government that, if you believe in it, the one that supposedly is a democracy. In the United States, you're fucking dumb. You're fucking fooling yourself. Okay. So, you know, take it or leave it. That's my take. And you know what? You know, I don't give a fuck you think, what you think of me or what I think of you. <laughs> um, it shouldn't matter. Just uh, think of matter. yourself and get your head out of your fucking ass. That's my message tonight. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> have you heard about the uh, walruses falling off a cliff to their death? Yes. Okay. This article on World Tribune says, Documentary film crew denies spooking walruses who fell to their death. So, 
<laughs> yeah, it says a, a disturbing. I'm sorry, it's not funny. It's just no. Ridiculous. I know, I know. It's a, a, a disturbing scene from a Netflix documentary series. Our planet shows several walruses falling to their deaths of, off a steep cliff in the Bering Strait. The documentary blamed the horrific event on climate change. Uh, of course they did. <laughs> David Attenborough, the narrator of the show, claimed that the melting sea ice drove the walruses off the cliff. However, some observers have not only refuted the claim that climate change was to blame, but said that the documentary's film crew may have been responsible for spooking the walruses, who then fled off the cliff. Along with oh, it, my God. Along, of course. Along with its cameras and film crew, uh, was using sure. drones. Those was assholes. They were using drones to film the scene. Those assholes. U.S. Fisheries spokesman said the walruses can flee en masse in response to the sight, sound, sure. and especially odors from humans right. and machines. Yeah. Our planet, oh our, our, our planet producer Sophie Landfear denied the crew spooked the walruses. Yeah, now that she's, yeah. now that she's made such a big deal about it, right? You know, um, it, it's it's uh, you know they they don't want to they don't want to fess up but, that they are the ones that killed. It was no freaking climate change no, killing the goddamn not at all. walruses. That's a per perfect example of that. The media lies. They lie. They set this stuff up. They to fool you purposely. Well, to brainwash you because they yeah, want. Yeah, brainwash you. Uh, they want you to think, oh, uh, climate change. Oh, look at the walruses are fucking committing suicide. It's like really. Yeah. So. You guys set this up and cause them to do this. You right, know? and then oh, look at the, let Well, they probably said, hey, let's scare these walruses off the cliff. And right. Then we, then yeah. We, we, that'll be great scenery for our for oh, our yeah. show. It's like you fucking murderers, you fucking <laughs> assholes. Typical human. Oh, I'm 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 superior. I'm a human being. Yeah, yeah. I'm superior than everything else on the planet. Really? Oh, there Fuck goes the, there goes the kiwi people. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Kiwi. Think kiwi. you're fucking better? Uh, Think you're better than something or someone else? You're yeah. fucking whacked. The, the kiwi people all got kicked. People using the kiwi jack oh, plant. Oh sure. <laughs> Not by me. I didn't kick them. Don't blame me, Vinny. You know what? Whatever you guys did or didn't do, I don't know. It's like a no, no. It's, it's get a chat client. You don't want to get kicked by a by that. And you right, need a right. Chat client. You need an IRC yeah. chat client. Okay, we're gonna do another all request set here all by right. another Ooh. one of our chatters. All right. And maybe you'll figure out who it is after the first few, all right. few I'm seconds. Sure I will. After the first few seconds here. I'm sure I will. All right, enjoy. I will. It's me! <laughs> it is you. <laughs> All right, that there was an all-moose girl request set. That last song there is Foghorn String Band doing Ruben's Train. Before that was the Wood Brothers with Luckiest Man, and we kicked it off with the old Crow Medicine Show and Down Home Girl. Yeehaw! <laughs> oh, boy, that's some fun stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, man, kick ass. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I, I like a lot of different musics, but... Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I got my heart music, which is mostly bluegrass. <laughs> right, right. You know, I can't, I can't uh, help it. <laughs> you know, it's just my favorite. You know, it gets me going. It keeps me young. It makes me happy. Oh, so, sure, sure. You know, I love, I love good some rock and roll. I love me some old rock and roll. I love me some fucking blues, dude. Right, right. I'm a blues, bluegrass, and a blues girl. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll never not love the blues. The blues can get me going, too, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. And rock and roll, you know, right, of course. Right, right, right. Yeah. But uh, music is where it's at for me. I mean, I swear to God, it's saved me so many times. I mean, I'm a girl, and so I get emotional sometimes. But you can be a man and be emotional. 
doesn't make you weak. Believe it or not. Uh, okay. I'm just saying. Putting that out there, <laughs> you know. And I know all you, like, he-man, she or he-man out there, and this macho well. dudes want to put on this fucking, oh, I'm a tough guy, I'm a badass. You know, you want to put that on that routine. I get that to a point. At the same time, you guys listen to Grammy's show. You know, you need to take care of yourselves. Absolutely. All these single guys like you, Grimner. Yes. Which I think you do a pretty good job, you know. I and, and I think Bezo does a pretty good job. And I'm really impressed with you guys, a lot of you guys, you know, you guys single guys, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, You guys are out there being hermits. <laughs> 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 I oh no, I called my son Matt a, a hermit the other day and he fucking got pissed and but he was like joking around. I'm like, dude, you're a hermit. He's like, what? What do you call it? I'm like, you're a fucking hermit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good no, thing. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Be then what's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like nothing. Cooper's a hermit. <laughs> being a hermit's a good thing. <laughs> No, but I'm, I just want to say, you know, kudos to you guys, you know, um, it's not easy, you know, um, I'm, I'm alone, sure. you know, yeah, we have friends and stuff, you know, but it's not the same thing, you you're know a, what I mean? You're, you're a hermitess. Yeah, pretty much, you know, <laughs> I mean, I am weird, dude, you know, yeah. I am fucking weird. <laughs> All right, um. Okay, well, we got some tech stories we got to cover. We only got a few okay. minutes here. Okay, oh, the tech stories. Okay. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. This is the All time, right, the time of the show for that. Cowboy Tech posted this link in the chat earlier during the show. Okay. So I thought I'd share. DNS over HTTPS is coming, whether the ISPs and government like it or not. So uh, this is on, um, what the hell is this site? Naked Security. Um, by Johnny Dunn here. Uh, the penny has finally dropped inside ISPs and governments that a privacy technology called DNS over HTTPS or don't <laughs> DOH <laughs> backed by Google, Mozilla, and Cloudflare is about to make web surveillance much more difficult. In the UK this matters because in 2016 Investigatory Powers Act IPA ISPs are required to store a record of which websites citizens visit for the previous 12 months, which is done by noticing the DNS requests. Uh, example, xyz.com or rlmradio.xyz. Uh, DNS over HTTPS, and it's a close relative to DNS over TLS or DOT, uh, makes this impossible because it encrypts the requests, normally sent in clear, hence the panic reported in a recent Sunday Times article. Uh, for more detail on how DOH and DOT work, read their previous coverage. they got a link here for that. Uh, the takeaway, however, is that the British National Cybersecurity Center and probably the U.S. government think its unexpectedly rapid evolution imperils the monitoring of Terrorism. Oh, no. And, and other illegal content. <laughs> Big ISP, uh, ISPs like Comcrap uh, also worry it will interfere with the complex content delivery network, traffic caching, uh, make customers <laughs> management through. So, anyway, they're, they're worried for, for profit and monitoring you reasons, and it's a good thing. So, um, fuck them. <laughs> anyway, look forward to that. That'll be a great uh, to have the, the DNS over over HTTPS. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this is not necessarily a tech story. Uh, it's on WEAU 13 News, uh, WEAU.com. You know, you're familiar with them, obviously. Oh, of course I am. Amazon to bring one-day delivery to Prime members. So right now, if you're a Prime member, you get two-day free free delivery. Now oh, it's going to be one day. So it says Amazon, which hooked shoppers on getting just about anything delivered in two days, 
announced Thursday it will soon promise one day delivery for U.S. Prime oh members. Oh my fucking god! Really? Yeah. So it. Well, it's a big, huge Amazon facility in the cities. Yeah. It's like in Egan. It's a suburb of St. Paul. It's like this huge Amazon facility. Well, and depending on what you order, depending on what you order, that warehouse may have it, but they may not. It may be coming right. from California or New York or wherever. Right, but that's still impressive. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the company hopes that cutting yeah. cutting delivery times in half will make its $119 a year Prime membership more attractive, since right. every every well, yeah. every other online store now no, can't off, guarantee that now offers free delivery in two days. So right. Amazon also can't compete with Walmart and Target when or ordering online and picking up at a store is becoming more popular. Uh, it's a smart change. Anyway, so if you're a Prime member. Um, I am. Raise my hand. I am. And and Moose is, and and a lot of you are. Uh, Prime Prime is great. Uh, 120 bucks, so it went up. It used to be 99. Yep. And so. Um, a bit. So that's terrific. Uh, like I said, not necessarily yep. a tech story, but. Um, but yeah. you know what? Even though they it's say a, that, they still can't guarantee that. Oh, I, I know. Weather happens and fucking. Whatever. No, I, if you, if you shit, it, it really, if you need your shit that fast, you better go to the fucking store and buy it. it no. You know, if you order on a Friday, you're not getting it Saturday. Right. No. If, if you you're order, getting it Monday. If you order on uh, right. Thursday, you probably won't get it Friday. No Monday. May, maybe now. Maybe now you will. I don't know. If, maybe if Saturday. It, if if it's a one day, well, they, most most of them don't deliver on Saturday. Right. But, uh, UPS is not delivering on Saturdays though. Yeah. So who and knows? And FedEx, I think, delivers on Saturdays, and the USPS delivers on Saturdays. Right, so right, right. Um, you might get it on a Saturday. Okay. Anybody still using Internet Explorer? First off, shoot yourself. Fuck no. For, <laughs> <laughs> for first off, shoot yourself. Sometimes uh, I accidentally like, click the E. Yeah, I, I know. And I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? Um, right. But if you are using it, stop. Uh, Internet Explorer security flaw allows hackers to steal your files. E Great. Oh, wonderful. Wait, 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 listen. Awesome news. Awesome. You, wonderful. You, Just wonderful. That's you, what we love to hear. Listen, listen, listen. You don't even have to be using IE for this to be a problem. <laughs> Microsoft's Internet Explorer has a long-standing reputation for poor security, but now it's bad enough that you could be attacked just by having it on your system. Security, re security <laughs> researcher John Page has revealed an unpatched ex ex exploit in the web browser's handling of MHT files, i.e. the web archive format, that hackers can use to both spy on Windows users and steal their local data. An open, uh, a Windows open MHT files and open... Uh, those files using which use IE by default, you don't even have to run the browser for this to be a problem. All you have to do is open an attachment sent through a chat or email. Uh, the vulnerability affects wow. Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows Server 2012. Uh, this would not be an issue if it weren't for the disclosure of the flaw. <laughs> so if you were ignorant, of, if they were, everybody was ignorant of it, it wouldn't be a problem. But everybody knows right, about it right. now. But now everyone knows. Yeah. So Page Page posted the details of the exploit after Microsoft reportedly declined to roll out a security fix. It instead said a fix would be considered in a future <laughs> release. While it, while that does suggest a patch may be on a, its way, it leaves millions of users potentially oh vulnerable God. unless they turn off Internet Explorer or, and there's a link here how to do that, or okay. uh, point to another app that can open MHT files. Wow. Or just just re remove the .dot .mht from your from your uh, um, from your uh, registry. So, right. Right. Yeah. So. And that's easy enough to do. If, you, if anybody needs help with that, just let me know. I'll, I'll fix you up. Okay. Sweet. Um. <laughs> well, thanks, Graham, for the heads up. That's a good thing to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. All right. Let's see if i got one more quick one here that I can do. All right. Sure. I, uh, good one to know, though, for sure. And you should remind people tomorrow. Some people... Well, it'll, it'll be in the blog. Don't listen to the so. podcast right away. It'll be in the blog. No big deal. Right. 
All right, let's let's go, let's, 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 let's go with this one here. Not necessarily <laughs> tech, but tech. All right, from RT.com, today. Researchers predict matrix-style Internet of Thoughts within the next few decades. <laughs> That's right, a matrix-style wow. matrix human brain-to-cloud interface could become a reality within decades, according to exciting new research by the neuroscientists and nanorobotics researchers. Um, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not thinking this is a good thing um, for a number of reasons. But uh, I mean, it would be kind of fun. But I, 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 I I'd be very hesitant to uh, jack in. I, I guess uh, they said on hackers or whatever. Um, the, the movie Hackers, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> with, Can you hear me? with Angelina. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Okay. Yeah. No, I was muted. The lights weren't off my headset. I, I'm yeah, yeah. No, you're, you're good. But uh, anyway, we got we got to we got to run to the last set here. So um, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Enjoy, yeah. people. We'll, we'll be back. back. We'll be back after this. <laughs> All right, that there was the uh, Southern Locals, the Southern Locals uh, covering Ram Jam's Black Betty, Ram Jam's version of Black Betty. Uh, it's a cover of a cover of a cover of a cover, because, uh, yeah, that goes way back in there. <laughs> but it was Ram Jam style by the Southern Locals. Uh, before that, we had Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band doing We Deserve a Happy Ending. And we kicked it off with Devo and Whip It. Whip It Good. <laughs> whip It Good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. All right, so. All right folks. So uh, yeah. it was fun. I had a good time. Did you have a good time? Oh, yeah, you bet. All right. So uh, we'll be back again next Friday with another Balls to yep. the Wall. Wait, no. Version. Another <laughs> Freaker's Ball. I heard that. I heard that, Grim. <laughs> well, Are you giving me a night off? Are you giving me a night off? Well, you can have a night off anytime you want. Oh, there. I know, but I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe no. I will have something to do. I mean, well, hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah. but. I, I don't generally know until Thursday. <laughs> right, exactly, you know. So, but I'm but no, but no. Crap before, yeah. <laughs> Either we'll be back or I'll be back. One way or the other, we'll, we'll be here being freaky. Yeah, one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow you got the dork table at noon with Flash and possibly a mystery guest. Uh, Ooh, a mystery guest. Uh, well, Ooh, how it, mysterious. It could be you. We don't know. Oh, shh. <laughs> Jack on. Okay. Uh, all right. My then, dog's seeing the night. My dog's barking at something. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck he's barking at. Probably a sound. Oh, my God. It's loud. Sorry, people. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Sun Sunday at noon Eastern, which is uh, 9 <laughs> o'clock. Nine, 9 o'clock Pacific. I'll be on with the blues. We'll be playing trivia in the chat. It's a good time. Come on in. And then I, I'll, lead you, I'll, I'll lead you right up on into I, Hal Anthony. I, I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute. Okay. I'll, I'll lead you on right up on into Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. He'll open up a big old can of whoop ass and uh, check it out. You'll learn something. Uh, Monday, I'll be on at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern with Grim Leftovers. And uh, Tuesday is Flash at 1 p.m. Eastern in a perfect world with Vinny, probably. Uh, Grammy will not be here on Wednesday night. So uh, that's a one day off next week. And then Thursday is Flash once again uh, at 20% off at 2 p.m. Eastern. And then it rolls right back around to Friday and Vinny in the morning, Grammy at her normal time, and back to this. So thanks, everybody. It's been wonderful. Uh, Y'all have yourselves a great weekend. Hopefully we'll see you here around the chat on RLM Radio, rlmradio.xyz. Uh, that's all. Talk to you all later. Peace.